So, Assalamu Alaikum, guys. Obviously, for today's video, we got finally a very special guest, and he has come up with the initiative with which I feel it's very unique and special. And before we get into the video, guys, I'm here to introduce a very special guest, brother Josh Angel. Brother, brother, how you how you been? Alhamdulillah, bro. Jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa Hope you guys are doing well. Alhamdulillah. So, brother Josh, I'm gonna get straight to the point. Lately, awesome. I've been following you, Alhamdulillah, and you've come up with the initiative, a plan, mm. uh, which is super unique. And you know, obviously, when I first you when you told me about it. I was very excited because I've never seen this. I've never seen somebody uh, that motivational in these matters because we don't see brothers in, you know, mashallah, in the community standing up for these things, which, which I, in fact, it makes you from a boy to a man. You know what I'm saying? And uh, if you would, would like to explain what is this initiative you'll come up with and why did you do what you do? Like, why did you think about this? Well, man, uh, Bismillah, wassalatu wassalam, wassalullah. It's really simple, dude. Um, you ask yourself, well, let me ask you, dude. The, the condition of the Ummah, man, it, it, it's well known, all right? It doesn't take a scholar. You don't have to go uh, travel to Mecca or to meet Medina, learn Arabic, and ask the, the ulama, what is the condition of, of, the, of the Muslims today? Yeah. What is our condition? It's well known, dude. It's well known. And I think a big reason for that is very simple. We can ask ourselves a very simple question. The Sahaba, did they talk more than they act or did they act more than they talk? And when we think about that question, meaning were they just, was it just lip service, right? Were they just saying a bunch of good things but put no action behind it? Or were these people, may Allah be pleased with them, high performance Muslims, action takers, conquerors in terms of whatever was in front of them. Go getter. All right, go getters, dude. Okay, and then we ask ourselves, okay, well, do we fit that same description as Muslims today? Or are we just lip service? Are we just talking? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So when I think about that, I go, okay, well, I see that this is a huge problem in this Ummah. And I don't really see anybody addressing it, right? I don't really see anybody addressing it f for the way that I, I believe it needs to be done. So I just took matters into my own hands and decided, you know what, man? I was that person. I was that person who talked more than they did. I was the, I was the one that would just constantly say, oh, man, I'm thinking about doing such and th such thing, but I never get around to it. Mm. One, two, three, five years down the road, and my life looks exactly the same. I was that individual, but Allah Azza wa Jal blessed me to learn some skills. All right. These are not things that I was born with. These are skill sets that allowed me to really attack anything that I wanted every single day mm. and become that person that I believe is a description and a representation of how the Sahaba were, if that makes sense. And Allah knows best. You know, you mentioned on your site, there's so many things you mentioned. But out of the things you mentioned is uh, that uh, even you talked to me about this, to be honest, a few days ago, we were talking on Instagram. You, you mentioned when I was talking to you, you said, I hear a lot of used to. I'm not, I don't want to hear that. It's not like you're dead. It's not like you're freaking, you know, your knees are blown out or something. Go, yeah, yeah. go out and get it. Right. And it, it, it may sound very simple. Because then I started giving excuses. I was like, hey, but the gyms are closed here. There's a lockdown here in Canada, yada, yada, yada. You're like, bro, that That's doesn't life. matter. That's <laughs> life. They, they won't. If, yeah. if you're waiting for ideal circumstances, dude, you're going to be waiting for the, to the, for the rest of your life until we pray to Janazza over you out here. That's just, <laughs> seriously, dude. Like, for Fuck. real, dude. Fuck. That's exactly how it's going to be. Hmm. Yeah. So, Brother Josh, now I have some... Obviously, on your website, you mentioned so many things, and obviously, some of the laymen, they may see it from a negative point of view, that this guy thinks he's all that. So, I'm here in this video we want to do, we want to clear out uh, everything, and I want to extrapolate exactly what you meant by what, when you wrote 
what you wrote, inshallah. So now, uh, okay, so on the starting page, alhamdulillah, you know, you obviously talk about, of course, alhamdulillah. Like, you know, when you're asking people, how are you doing, Aqi, the guy will be like, oh, brother, alhamdulillah, I'm good. And you're like, of course, alhamdulillah. Now tell me how you're really doing. So yeah. this is really bold into your face. But why do you say that? Because it's, it's reality, man. It's reality. We are conditioned, not even as Muslims, but just as men, that we don't talk about our problems, right? We never, ever to anybody. We are just supposed to just hold it all in, right? And that if you talk about your problems, you're acting like a you're acting like a girl. You're acting like a woman. Yes, yes. Right? Like suck it up, Buttercup, and that's life. You know what I mean? And there is a there is a time for that, no doubt. There there is a time for that. But there's a difference between complaining and seeking help. Yeah. Right. I, I yeah. think I think that's a delineation that a lot of us we need to actually understand mm -hmm. is that there's a difference between me complaining and acting like a victim and me saying, hey, look, dude, I have this problem, man. I have a problem and I want to know how to fix it. Right. Like we can go back again to the Sahaba when the Sahaba had a problem. Do they just keep it to themselves or do they go address and talk to the messenger of Allah and get okay. advice, get Nasiha? Yeah. Right. What yeah. was, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, dude, this is common sense, man. Like, we need to critically think here for a moment. And so, that it, going back to the question of why, why is it so impossible, man, for, for us to just, just ask for help? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And like, yeah. dude, you don't, yeah. have to, you don't have to suffer in silence just because you're a man, right? Yeah, like, just, 100% true. And that, that, that that's <clears throat> it leads to bigger problems. And now, further on in your article, you did mention something. We're, we're going to exactly come back to the same point, because what you're talking about, you, you, you even mentioned further on and I have it highlighted, inshallah. Yeah. Then they normally take it out on their wife and kids by either aggression or you say also being totally emotionally absent. So what do you mean by this? I mean, it's, I think it's pretty straightforward, man. It's like when you bottle something up inside, dude, yeah. eventually the thing's going to burst, man. You take, you take, you know, uh, a bottle of Coke or a bottle of pop or a bottle of soda, whatever you guys call it over in Canada, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And you shake that thing up enough, dude, eventually it's going to explode, man. Yeah. You know what really I mean? And, yeah. Dude. Yeah. And it's going to, it's going to do a lot of damage. Yeah. Right. And a lot of times it's going to be irreparable damage where it leads in divorce. It yeah. leads in loss of loss of a job, loss of a home, uh, loss of absolute love and respect from your children and admiration from your children, dude. Um, or again, you or the opposite. You're just totally absent because you have all of this inside of you and it's not going away. It's not going away. And you already feel the pressure of man, you know, especially what's going on in the world today. Everyone knows what's going on. So you have that pressure. You have the pressure of your job. You have the pressure of your bills. You have the pressure of all these things. And then you have all this other stuff going on inside of you. And you're just you're just told, oh, just have sabr, Aki. Just make dua. Suck of course up. have sabr, bro. Have, of course have sabr. Of course make dua. But is that is that it? Or are you supposed to follow that up with action? Mm -hmm. yeah, action you know is a mean? Very, very important part, which is lost. And, and, also, and, and, and one last point is, dude, if, if, if again... If that leads, if that, if what you're doing leads to divorce, if what you're doing or lack of, you know, the, you're not taking action, you're not doing anything, and that destroys your, your household, bro. Mm -hmm. What do you think your condition with Allah is, man? Allah. All of these issues are, man, and that's that's the whole point of Uma. That's the whole point of the Ultimate Muslim Man Academy, dude. Is firstly to freaking deal with reality, man. All right, yeah. stop sugarcoating stuff. Stop convincing yourself and try, trying to sell yourself on the idea that things aren't so bad, and that oh, those problems are for somebody else. They're not for us, dude. We yeah. struggle and we suffer from the same exact issues that the non-Muslims do. So when if that when if that is the reality, and if if that's the case, dude. Why should anyone look to the Muslims as a means of this is how I should be living my life? This is the wow. example with which I should follow when you guys literally suffer from the same exact issues that I do. Mm -hmm. So what's the point of me? Stop drinking, stop gambling, stop having, you know, stop having a girlfriend, 
you know, uh, start covering myself if I'm a woman or whatever. Like, why? Why? Like, dude, y'all are just as messed up as we are. Exactly. And, the fa- and the fact is, is that you try to pretend like you aren't, though, which makes you worse. Because mm-hmm. you just try to pretend like you ain't. At least we yeah. admit it. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? This is another part in the on your website, which I found very, uh, mashallah, intriguing and unique. And you say here, I would never let anyone know that I was suffering inside. And you're speaking about yourself. Mm. And you, then you say, so people, I underlined it, uh, so people would constantly walk all over me. And then you you say, you know, like you mentioned, even you were there at a position that I was uh, too ashamed to ask for help. And then uh, the fourth thing you mentioned is like numbing myself with distractions and entertainment. We talked about this, I think, a few days ago. You, you were mentioning this. And then the last thing you mentioned is you would justify... So now you're also speaking then you're probably I'm, I'm understanding from what you're saying that you're not even a Muslim when you're saying this. I was justifying my weaknesses, my shortcomings by, by telling myself that this world was only for the non-believers. So inshallah, if you would go through some of these points and, you know, if you could explain, uh, you know, it will mean a lot, inshallah. Yeah, man. Again, dude, like it goes to the points that we were making earlier, dude. I was convinced that I was less of a man if uh, if I told anyone about my problems because mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, man, you know what? Dude, everyone's got their problems. They don't want to hear about my problems, dude. Like I'm not going to burden someone else with burden some, you know, someone else with my problems, you know, and they probably can't help me anyways. Yeah. Right. So I would just continue just suffering inside, man. And And again, because I was doing that and I didn't know how to handle those issues, it would it would destroy my confidence and my self-esteem, mm-hmm. right? And so because I had no confidence, I had no self-esteem, I wouldn't stand up for myself. And eventually people would just, again, just walk all over me, dude, right? And and it would just treat me awful. And it's because I had no confidence in myself uh, because my life was a dumpster fire, basically, right? Mm-hmm. And so again, like, as, as it says, you know, I started numbing myself with distractions like most people do, distractions and entertainment, anything to get my mind off the fact that my life sucks. All right. That's the reality, dude. My life sucks. OK, I'm not proud of who I am. I'm not proud of the life that I'm living. I'm not, dude, no, I'm just not proud of myself. I'm, I don't like who I am. Right. And there's a, and it goes against the narrative of self-love and love yourself, who you are. Dude, I'm against that 100 percent, dude. You don't love, dude, you, that, like, you, the only way to love yourself, dude, is to put yourself in a position where you're keeping the promises that you make to yourself, dude. Mm -hmm. Okay. When you, when you say, when your word is everything to you and you trust yourself, that's when you love yourself, dude. You shouldn't love yourself, dude. If you're freaking, if you're 100, 200, 300 pounds overweight, dude, you shouldn't love yourself. You shouldn't love yourself if you're not praying Salah. You nope. shouldn't love yourself if you're a piece of crap to your wife, dude. Like, you shouldn't love yourself. Mm. You shouldn't accept yourself. You should demand higher standards for yourself, right? You remind me of an, of us, even you remind me of a narration during the time of Umar al-Khattab, radiallahu anhu, a man had a big belly protruding. And then uh, Umar al-Khattab, radiallahu anhu, he pointed at it. He's like, what is this? He said, this is barakah. The, 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 Umar al-Khattab, radiallahu anhu, replied, la, this is ghadab Allah. This is the wrath of Allah on you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and 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 even the wife thing you mentioned, the prophet said the best of you are the best to their wives, and I am the best to my wife. Where is that? Why do we? Why why aren't you know this this hadith you know taught enough? You know say it enough? No, because you know, unfortunately, we don't want to hear everything. Well, I mean, here's the thing: is like going to the, alongside that point, uh, a lot of men. And I talk to a lot of brothers, dude, and they honestly believe that as long as they put food on the table, a roof over your head, clothes on your back, shut up and, and, and don't complain. They think that's it. That's all it takes to be, you know, that's all it is. Husband, I put food on in your belly, roof over your head, clothes on your back. I won't hear nothing else. With all due respect, I'm not going to disrespect anybody, but the husband looks more pregnant than the wife. <laughs> dude. I mean, it, like, honestly, bro, if you can't see your toes, that's a problem, dude. <laughs> oh my God. I'm not going to... Mean, dude, no, I mean, that's the thing is, dude, you, you, my message oh, yeah. isn't for everybody, man. I say that openly and I say that every day. My message is not for everybody, dude. My yeah. message is for a specific man who 
wants to change his life, dude, who's mm-hmm. sick of that victim mentality, who's sick of making excuses, and is willing to accept his reality and then do whatever he can to change it. All right. Because like I said before, dude, these are skill sets, discipline, yeah. mental toughness, consistency, mm-hmm. perseverance, grit, determination, drive, con- all of this. It's a skill set, dude. It's something that you can learn. Mm-hmm. It's not something that you're born with, man. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So if this hurts your feelings, good. I'm not here for you to like me. I'm here to help you. All right. I'm not, not here it, yeah. to, to tell you what you want to hear, dude. I'm telling you yeah. what you need to hear. So if you don't like it, great. That's exactly that's we're in a good position. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's how it is. You know, the truth sometimes is bitter, but it's the truth, right? I mean, here's the thing, dude. To me, mercy, real mercy, real love is telling a person what they need to hear, man. Me, you seen your kids on drugs and saying, Oh, I'm not gonna bother them because you know they're probably going through things and you know, life is just really tough and you know, it's really tough being a teenager. That's not love, bro. Love is, dude, you better get your little butt right here right now because we're finna have a talk. You know what I'm yeah. saying? That's love, dude. Yeah, definitely. That's mercy. Yeah. Not the, not, not this little soft baby, let me let me just cuddle you, you know what I'm saying, and pap your little butt. Yeah. yeah. That ain't love, bro. Nope, not at all. You know, uh, going back to this, you would justify your weakness by telling yourself that this world is only for the kufar, the non-believers, right? Uh, you know. Right. Well, basically what I was trying to convince myself of is that, well, that's the life of a Muslim, right? I'm supposed to be miserable because this is, this is a prison for the believer, right? This is prison, right? And, and uh, this, is, this is paradise for the non-believer. So naturally, this is what I'm supposed to feel like every day. I'm just supposed to suffer inside. And that's exactly what I have to go through in order to get paradise. Mm. So that's what I would convince myself of. I would say, well, this, yeah, it, it makes sense. The reason why I'm feeling like this is because this world is for the kufar. It's for the non-believers. Mm. But the thing is, dude, is like, whoever said that you can't have the best of this life and the best in the hereafter. So because uh, I'm pretty sure Allah Zibajal said that the believers say, they don't just ask for the, be- the best of the hereafter. They, s- they say the best in this life, too. What's the best in this life, bro? Having financial strength and independence. Having physical strength and independence. right? Having a great, solid relationship with your wife and your kids and your community. right? That's, that's the good of this life. What else is that referring to, bro? Yeah. yeah. You see what I'm saying? You're, you're, you know, Brother Josh, e- even generally what I've observed in life, when people go for only one avenue in life, like I have a couple of brothers I knew, you know, we would have, we would have a group. We would go for, we would go to play basketball in the morning. You know, we, we would pray Fajr in the morning, like around 5 a.m. And then we play basketball since from 6 all the way to 9. So it, was, it would be an amazing, like, you know, start to the, the morning. Yeah, 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 yeah. But a lot of these brothers, they got into university and, you know, life kicked in. And uh, their, their excuse would be like, I'm just busy with my studies. And they're, they're just focused, fixated in one avenue in their life. And now, subhanAllah, not, not, no shot to these brothers if they're ever watching this. But when I yeah. seen them, Allah forbid, you see, like, okay, fine, he may be excelling in one field. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. But clearly from what I see you, you've lost your health. Mm. You look like, billah, like a zombie, right? Zombie, With all due respect. Bro. And, and like, just fixated, being fixated in one thing, I don't even feel like, you, you know, you're good at that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like you've, it's it's clear to me that you lost a lot of aspects in your life being fixated on only one thing, you know, only one thing. So, well, my question is, dude, is how good can you be if you're neglecting these other areas? How good can you be in your study? How good of a husband can I be if I'm lazy, out of shape, constantly stressed out, my diet is garbage, I don't ever work out, you know what I'm saying? All of these different aspects of our lives, right? I got no money. Right, I got. I barely got any dean. You know, what I'm saying I'm just trying to pay the bills. How yeah. good of a husband can I be? How good of a father can I be? How good of an, you know, whatever a CEO of a business, a founder of a business, or an employee, or that's, you know, whatever it is that you know you're, you're pursuing, dude. If you ain't got your, you know, what I'm saying if you ain't got these other things dialed in, dude, you're yeah. leaving. You're leaving potential on the table, man. It's like I always tell my. I have this conversation with my wife all the time. I tell her, dude. 
I have to do for me first before I can before I can do anything for you. I got to make sure I'm good with me. I got to make sure that when I look in the mirror and I see who's staring back at me, that I'm proud of who I am and I'm proud of what I've done today. Not what I did yesterday, because yesterday don't matter no more, dude. It's about what what have I done today, right? And as long as I'm proud of what I've done today, now I can show up for you and I can show up as the best version of myself, right? But when I got all this other crap weighing me down, bro, I can't I can't be present. I can't be there for you. I can't be my most energetic, present, uh, you know, uh, charismatic, you know, loving person that I have the potential to be. But it's only when I get these other things dialed in that I can be literally be the if, the most effective and best in it, all these different areas of life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's how I look yeah. at it. Man. You you also mention it this in your in your mashallah side, which I was very, uh, you know, okay, not here, but I, I didn't screenshot this, but I I remember from what I read, and I'm pretty sure you'll be able to recall that. Uh, you mentioned that what's your excuse that subhanallah you're you, you're working a full time job. Your your husband, a father, mashallah, may Allah bless you. Your 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 da'i, mashallah. You're calling people towards the good and you're forbidding the evil. Alhamdulillah, from the from all the blessing of God, and you're 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 doing you're you're doing many more other things, mashallah. Now you're even a mashallah. If I I can make the excuse, mashallah, you're even an entrepreneur, mashallah. Alhamdulillah, <laughs> right? And the physical aspect of your life, you have taken over matters. Alhamdulillah, everything you're now uh, you're trying to now. Uh, keep everything as you go, right? Uh, just, uh, just on the point we were talking about earlier, just a few moments ago, this really ties into that. Uh, what would you say about that? You know, so what's your excuse? As you say, exactly, man. I mean, yeah, exactly. What is your excuse, dude? What, that's the thing is like, dude, I am very open and transparent about my life, right? So I don't, I don't hide the fact that right now I'm a, I'm a full-time employee. Love about it. Right? I'm a full-time employee, which you know what? To me, it gives me credibility. Because I'm like, okay, what's your excuse? You're a full-time employee? So am I. Oh, you're a husband? Well, so am I. Oh, you're a dad? Well, so am I. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> okay. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, everything that you got, bro, I'm like, oh, well, hey, I'm that too. So what's, hey, your, excuse? Yeah, so what's your excuse now? I mean, literally, what is it? What's your? I, I, I put all this out there to remove every single excuse that you think that you got, bro. Because once you remove all the excuses off the table, now we can work. Now we can get to work, man, and actually handle some business. Yeah. But you've convinced yourself that because you have a full-time job, because you have that. No, you're just not organized, bro. You're just not effective, period. That's your problem, dude. I guarantee if I were to look into your life right now and I were to study your life for a week, even a day, I would see so many holes in your game, dude. I would see so much time that you're wasting. I would see so many things that we can improve and even probably just a couple things, just a couple of tweaks. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, um, t- you know, today, you know, I, I, I dropped a blog about 20 minutes ago, man. Yeah. And, blast. and, uh, it's about, dude, if you want to win it, you win by controlling your nights. That's it, bro. If you can control the last hour of your night and the first hour of your morning, you are going to win inshallah, dude. Because most everyone's day starts the night before. How you went to bed? Did you stay up all night? Did you stay up all night watching Netflix, scrolling through mindless social media, watching movies, whatever? Mm. Not focused, right? And because you stayed up late, then you overslept. And because you overslept, now you're not getting in a good, nutritious, wholesome breakfast. You're just picking something in the fast food you know, drive through, right? You're stressed out. You're late for work. Because you, because you overslept, oh man, now I can't get to the gym because now I have this after work and I have all these other. It all started with the night before, dude. So if oh, we could yeah. simply just fix your night before, mm. if we could if we could control that last hour where you just prepare and remove all the tension and all the friction between you and making the right decision that is in your best interest the following mm. morning, I guarantee, dude, your life will dramatically change, mm. right? If we just made sure that you're your clothes are ready if you're going to the gym in the morning. If we just made sure that your food is prepared, you got your water, protein, whatever, pre-workout, gym bag's good to go. If we just ma- merely had those issues taken care of, when you wake up in that morning, you go, dang, my bag's good to go. Hey, my food's ready to go. The only thing I got to do 
throw my clothes on and get out the door. That sounds pretty easy. One thing, even I guess what, that? bro? Now you got the win. Now you got momentum, bro. And you know, I just said about the clothes. One thing I do myself, right? I, 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 I sometimes to reward myself, I, I'll get, a, I'll get a new pair of shorts. I'll, I'll do, I'll switch it up like that in a way because then whenever I'm going to the gym, I'm excited. The, oh, my clothes are ready. Everything is ready. You know, so it, already in my mind now, it's like I'm thinking. I'm thinking already. Like you know, everything is already in place. I just gotta plug in and play. You know what I'm saying? But if your clothes are dirty, you, you know, back to back. Like, man, I don't know where my pair of socks are. At. Yeah, so <laughs> it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. I ain't got no ain't yeah. got time for that. You know, yeah. I'm just gonna go ahead and turn back over. You know? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So everything has got to be in place, and it's very easy because right after what I try doing is right after a workout, I try, you know, I have like three pairs. So okay, so two two days I I run this pair, and then the the the, sec, the end of the second day I'm I'm already cleaning it. So. Alhamdulillah, I'm able to like, you know, system, dude, yeah, and it's simple, dude. It's, it, willpower is for amateurs. And that's a straight up fact, dude. Willpower, motivation, all that stuff is for amateurs, dude. Real experts, real pros, real high performance people. They put systems in their life like what you just what you just described to take all the willpower out of it, all the decision making out of it. And you just, it's just you just make it the system. Oh, every second day. This is what I do. This is what yeah. I do. And guess what? It seems to work, exactly. you know. Exactly. You know. And brother Josh, going back to the website, uh, now here I hit you. I'll say on the spot. You you were talking about the numbness and the pain, as we see on the screen, and you would try to desperate. Uh, you know, like you know, you you were very desperate to escape the reality. You would uh, drown yourself in things like drugs, alcohol, overeating, gambling. You mentioned uh, pornography, and then you mentioned TV and video games. Now that, I want to know, why did you mention all these things? That's the fact, dude, is that it's all a distraction. It's all a dopamine hit. It's all something to make you feel good in, a, in, good in the moment. Yeah. Followed by, a ton, like, followed by emptiness, dude. You yeah. keep looking for happiness in the same place that you lost it. Facts. You, 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 you are searching for happiness in the same place that you lost it, dude. You lo you lost your happiness because you watched that watched that filthy porn and then you were feeling guilty and like, man, Allah is watching me. The angels are putting down this down written writing these down in my book. I'm gonna have to answer this. I'm gonna have to look at this on Yom Kiyama. But for that split split second of relief, I had a little bit of quote unquote happiness. Yeah. And then I'm just gonna go back to it. And then back to it. The same place that I lost it. The same place that I lost the happiness. I'm gonna just keep going back to it, dude. TV and video games are no different, dude. It's no different. Why? Why would you say that? Because again, it's a distraction, dude, and it and it, it, it it's taking you away from actually doing doing the work, actually doing something that brings true fulfillment, true self confidence, true self esteem, true pride. In the halal, inshallah, as a jail, right? Just true self confidence, dude, because you're actually doing something worthwhile. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, we had that private conversation just a couple of days ago, dude. Yeah. People watch, play video games and it gives them a, self, a, a sense of self um, or, or false accomplishment. Yeah. Same thing with porn, dude. You didn't please that woman, <laughs> you didn't satisfy that woman. Let's just get real, bro. Honestly, you, did, you, did, you didn't. She wasn't talking about you, <laughs> but you've convinced yourself that in that moment that, oh man, yeah, I'm pleasing her. I'm satisfying her. She ain't never had no one like me, blah, 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 bro. You're, you're, you're lying to yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's why you feel like garbage afterwards. Mm -hmm. Cause you know that you might convince this person and that person, and you might put on this mask, right? That everything's hunky dory, man. Everything, alhamdulillah, kumbaya. I'm going to say alhamdulillah. When you look in the mirror, and when you're at, and when you're in your thoughts at night alone, when the lights are off, and you're and you're, you know, laying down to go to bed, and you're in your own thoughts, you you know as well as I do, man. It's a lie, dude. Well, it's a lie, it's a lie. Straight up lie. And you know, I tell the younger brothers all the time. I'm like, look, if you, you know, like you shared that fireman uh, reel uh, three, four days ago. We're firemen. Yeah, that, dude, that thing exists. Man. You need to have a hit. Every time, dude. I, Every time. I tell this to the younger guys. I'm like. Have a hate. Hate this from your heart. 
imagine, like, you know, if you don't hate these people and what they do, and you don't hate this for yourself, you're, you're going to fall into it. You know, Allah says, O oh, you who believe, uh, take uh, Satan and his army, uh, like, they're, they're, take him as an enemy, enemy. for verily he's your enemy. You got to hate Shaitan and his army, with all due respect. You got to hate these people, man. You got to hate what they do. And that prevents you from not even doing this because there is a part in your heart which you may like. You know, there, 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 there's a want, right? Like, obviously, these guys cater on your, on, 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 on people's desire. weakness. Yeah, exactly. Your, yeah. But if you're not going to hate this, you're not going to be, like, all the things you, even you mentioned earlier, being overweight, you know, uh, losing your life and all this. If you're not going to hate the conclusion of your choices, which th mm -hmm. these things will end up in, right? You're going to fall into well, it. You're going to keep following into it. Well, well, yeah, because that that goes against all these different things that we're taught, dude. Oh, hate's a very strong word, so you shouldn't say that. You know, you might hurt someone's feelings and offend somebody. Big deal. Get over it. You Get know what I'm saying? Here. I'm going to speak the truth. If you don't like it, whatever. I don't care. That's not going to change reality. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We can try to live in this utopia, ideal, idealistic world, but that's not reality, dude. Mm -hmm. And you're right. What you don't hate, and I believe Malcolm X said this, what you don't hate, you'll eventually tolerate. Yeah. You have to hate it, dude. Hate, hate, pain, all of these things are very strong motivators. And I always like to ask the question, you know, what motivates you more? Jenna or Nar? What motivates you? Is it yeah, the, 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 to go to paradise? To, is that why you pray your salah? Is that why you avoid the haram? Is that why you try to do good deeds and be good to your parents and, you know, give da'wah and all those things? Is that because you're more inclined because you want Jannah or it's because you're doing everything possible you can to avoid that punishment and that nar. It's that punishment. See, a lot of people, man, it's hard for us to conceptualize a place that is perfect where there's no sadness, no grief, no frustration, no anxiety, no disappointments. That's hard to conceptualize, man. Mm. But pain, suffering, we can all recognize and, and, and relate to that and go, you know what? I, I can definitely think, I can think, uh, count on both hands and toes, all the different, all the things that, you know, memories I have, mm. you know what I mean? And so, dude, pain, hate, these are strong emotions, but man, you have to be an alchemist, right? What's an alchemist? An alchemist takes something that is worthless and turns it into something that is priceless, Wow. right? That's what alchemist does. So instead of just suffering, instead of just having that pain and anxiety and frustration and anger and resentment and all these different things that are going on in your life, that hate, mm -hmm. why don't you take it and turn it into productive action? Turn it into productive action to where now you have everything that you want, inshallah, Zohjah. You have the dean that you want. You have the spouse that you want. You have the, the fitness and the money and all these different things that again, Rabbana Afid Af losing my train of thought. Rabbana Afidun Hasna Filakh Hasna Kidamna that you have a good in this life and a good in the after, bro. Right. right? King Talut, I believe. Yes. Yes. What did they, they the, the people said, why did Allah choose him? Because he was physically strong, bro. That yeah. was one of the that was one of the conditions for why Allah Zawajal picked him. Because he was physically able. He was a force to be reckoned with, dude. You know what I mean? It's like, dude, and going back to like, man, we're supposed to be warriors, dude. Legit. Like, that may, you know, I don't care what anyone says. Dude, we are supposed to be warriors by nature. We're supposed to be men, right? And we are being stripped of that every single day. Toxic, Toxic man. masculinity. Toxic. You, you know say what I'm saying? <laughs> like, bro. Like, dude, when you can conquer men, period. When you can conquer a man and you can take that out of them, that that fit the out of them to be defenders, to be protectors, to be providers and presiders, to be warriors. If you take that out of them, bro, know for sure you can conquer that city, that country, that nation, like that, bro. Because you got no one to fight you. You got no one to resist. And that's what's going on every single day. And, and so it is, that's why I say it is. No longer a choice, bro. It's an obligation. 
take it from me, it's an obligation, bro, to, for, to, to become personally excellent in all areas of your life. It's no longer an option. Mm -hmm. Personal excellence is your responsibility, man. It's your duty, period. Yes. You know, some of these brothers, uh, may Allah bless them. We're not going to like, you know, I'm not trying to throw anybody under the bus, but what's wrong is wrong. When they see kibar ulema, some of them, or when they see like, you know, even the, the, she, the imam in the, in the masjid, the local imam, uh, they see him, his belly is protruding. With all due respect, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but I'm just going to say things for how they are. They justify it. They say, oh, look, you know, Imam Sahib, mashallah, he's an Imam, he, you know, teaches Quran, this, you know, Alhamdulillah, you know, he, he, his physical health is, you know, whatever, but like, you know, life is, you know, just, you know, we're going to focus on this aspect only on the deen, attending the roofs and attending classes. But, you know, like, like just like Sheikh, you know, the physical aspect, you know, I don't care if I'm 24, 23, and I don't care if the Sheikh is like, you know, he lived his life, like he's 55, but, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm gonna do what he did. You know, like you know what I'm saying. They, they get. Well, to me, dude, it's like, what's the point of, what's the point of all this knowledge? It's supposed to be applied. It's supposed to make your life better. Period. It's supposed to make you a better person. It's supposed to make you a better Muslim. Right. Like, if you just have a bunch of knowledge swirling around in your head, like, bro, what's the point of all that? You know what I mean? I'd rather, mm -hmm. like, dude, it, knowledge, knowledge is not powerful. Applied knowledge is powerful. Mm -hmm. There's a difference. Applied knowledge. Applied knowledge, yeah. And that, that, that takes a lot of and skill. Th and, and that's another reason why I put myself out there. Now, again, I'm not a scholar. I'm not Talab al I'm not none of that, bro. I never claimed to be. But that's something I've been seeing for a very long time that I'm like, okay, dude, like, you know, you teach with all the respect. I love the ulama. I love the talab ulam. I love them with all my heart, man. I'm going preserve them, protect them, and, you know, honor them this I mean, life and thereafter, man. But, like, I see that you give the rus. I see that you give all these, like, you know, you, you teach all this um, theory or all these different concepts. But when are we going to see it actually applied? You know, I'm the type of person, man, that you can tell me something, but I need to see it. I want to see it applied. So when you start teaching me a, about all these different things about how to conduct yourself and, you know, how to treat your parents or how to respond to your parents and how to treat your family. Dude, I want to see that in real life. I want to see real life examples because that actually helps me understand more than just reading some words off a page. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I wasn't seeing anyone doing that. So that's why I put myself out there every single day to be like, dude, this, this is what happens when you actually really take knowledge seriously and you, you really apply it. This is what this is what it looks like. Now, brother Josh, we're gonna be playing a little game, okay? Okay. Agree. You're the one who created the game, so you should know the rules of the game. Are you ready? Yeah, inshallah. Okay. Let's go. So now here, obviously, we have it on the screen. You have it on the title. Can you guess which one is a Muslim man? And then you say, neither can I. Now, before we get into like who is, uh, who's a Muslim amongst these three, why do you choose these three different pictures, and what's the idea behind it? I would like to know. I mean, here's the thing, dude: is that like you look at these three pictures and you see no Islamic identity whatsoever. You have the the, the older gentleman on the left, and he's doing exactly what the Prophet Muhammad told us not to do. Yes. Right. He said, grow your beard and trim your mustache. What's he doing? Opposite. Shaving his beard and letting his mustache grow with a big mm -hmm. old cigarette in his mouth. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, then you have this, the one on the second. Same yeah. deal. No Islamic identity, man. You can tell there's something growing there, but you know what? He's, he's probably shaving. Right? Mm -hmm. He's probably getting, for whatever reason. Again, mm -hmm. the Prophet Sallam said, grow your beard. Be different from the mushrikeen, man. Be different. Yeah. All right? And then you got the dude on the left, and again, I'm not on the right, you know. And it's not to judge, but here's the thing, dude: is like, I, you know, I'm cool. I, I love style and fashion, all those things, man. But again, there's, there's no Islamic identity with any of these individuals. Nothing. None of them. Mm -hmm. And the, here's, you want me to reveal which one is Muslim? Please. None of them. Wow. Well, we wouldn't know because that's what we look like. That's exactly what we look like. If we look at the Muslim today. If I were to tell you all three of those were Muslim, would you believe me? 
Is that something you'd believe? If I said, yeah, I man, that, that, that guy on the left, he's Kurdish. That guy on the, you know, in the middle. Yeah, he's Bosnian. Yeah, or Bosnia. Yeah, the guy on the right, man. Yeah, I would believe it. Yeah. I would believe it. You're like, yeah, those are Muslims. Yeah. But, but how, how like, if I didn't tell you that, how would you know? Mm-hmm. And that's, this is, this is what we look like today, dude. We have no Islamic identity. We have no pride in our Islam whatsoever. You know what I'm saying? I'm not telling you that you need to wear a thobe. I'm not telling you that you need to dress like an Arab. That's not what I'm saying. But you need to have some type of Islamic identity that when someone looks at you, they go, that dude's got to be Muslim. That sister's got to be Muslim. I don't know anyone else who looks and dresses like that. You know what I mean? So, I mean, and, and that's that, that's what all this is about, dude, is like you have to be proud of who you are. You have to be proud that Allah made you and chose you out of the seven plus billion people on the planet. He chose you to be a Muslim. And look what you're doing with it, man. Nothing. Not no. doing anything with it, bro. So it's like, I don't know, man. When I when I see this, dude, and I, and I see that we are just so ashamed of our Islamic identity or we water it down so much to appease other people. Mm-hmm. How would you respond to those who would say, you're being too extreme. Calm down a bit. Maybe I am, bro. Maybe I am. Because I'm extremely concerned about the state of this Uma. Being extreme isn't all, always a bad thing, man. I'm extremely mm-hmm. concerned. I, ext- I care extremely deeply about the situation. Simple, man. Uh, again, whatever label me i don't care i'm not i don't have to respond to every single person that throws some type of disagreement or whatever whatever they got label on me whatever i don't care and that like dude it doesn't matter mm-hmm. i'm not concerned about you if you think i'm an extremist cool great awesome you know what i mean your your my message isn't for you my message is for people who are again willing to look at what I just said and did and what I just showed you and what we just discussed and go, you know what? Yeah, he's right, man. He's right. Take heed, take admonition. Yeah. Don't just, you know, uh, take you, uh, the people that obviously when you're, and, you know how it is, they'll take and, you as an adversary. Yeah. And one last thing is like, dude, you know <laughs> what? You're not supposed to take, you're not supposed to take what I say as, you know, why he from Allah Zawajal. I'm not a prophet. I'm not a messenger, dude. So what, am, what are you supposed to do when someone says something? You're supposed to wait against Quran and Sunnah, mm-hmm. right? Quran and Sunnah, Fahim the Saba. Well, is anything I just said against what I, I came with Dalil? I came with the Prophet Muhammad said, some said this. The Prophet Muhammad said, some said this. Oh, wow. da, da, da. So if you think that's extreme for me to bring Hadith and Quran, then may Allah have mercy on your soul, on your soul bro. Legit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? May Allah have mercy. And br- Brother Josh, even like you know, you, you touch upon these you know reminders, mashallah. Even the Prophet sallam, when he was in war, the Sahabas report that they would take refuge behind in him, and he would be such a warrior, a battle like a like a lion. You know when he was on on the battlefield, having this warrior type of mentality, having this identity to your to, you know to your Islam. This is all what Islam teaches. You know at the end of the day, because we're told to do opposite. Of the Yahud and the, and, and the you know, the, 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 the yes, exactly, and the, the Mushriks, right? But at the end, nowadays, we're, you know, anything goes. Well, here's the thing, man, is that, you know, for some of us, like, you know, which you could say that we are in a, in a war right now, um, an I- ideological war, and uh, if that's a word, I'm not a very, I, vo- words are hard, bro. I'm a mental toughness coach, not a vocabulary coach, but, you know, <laughs> like, um, you know, in Canada and, you know, globally what's going on with this pandemic, man. But here's the thing, dude, is when, when there's not a physical war going on, dude, you need to be prepared for it as if there were, there, there were, right. Or as if there is, mm. the only way to do that is to do difficult things every single day. You need to make yourself battle ready, mentally unbreakable, right. For when, if, and when that, that's sit- that scenario and that situation comes knocking on your door. 
because it can it can arrive and it do obviously i mean this is clear proof look at what's going on the last two years if two years ago if i would have told you man everything that's gone that's taken place in the last two years you would say you're out of your mind josh you're crazy dude that's not going to happen they're not going to shut down the entire world they're not going to do this they're not going to do that there's going to be there's not going to be mass hysteria and all this divisiveness and all of this craziness going on in the world. I said, yeah, dude, it's going to happen, bro. And a lot of people are going to buy into it. It's like, dude, life can change like that, dude. So if you think that this is again, extreme and overly cautious and, you know, whatever other fancy labels and exotic terms you want to give it. Okay, man, we'll see. We'll see where your life is and where my life is in the next five to 10 years. Inshallah. You know what I'm saying? May Allah, may Allah elevate you, my brother. I mean, as well. Now, the ultimate Muslim Man Academy. Now, you explain some of the highlights here. You say to smash all self-doubt and limiting beliefs. Gain clarity in your life's work and purpose. Uh, heal from trauma that makes you feel broken and unworthy. Gain mastery of your life as a practicing Muslim man. Why do you say all this? Well, I think it's important because uh, that's what the issues that we have right now, dude, is that we have so much self-doubt and so much living belief, right? We have so many living beliefs about ourselves. Oh, this is just who I am. I'm just lazy. I'm just a procrastinator. I'm just the, I'm just the, man, it's just a bunch of limiting beliefs. You have convinced yourself and sold yourself on this narrative and the story. And that's why you keep perpetuating the same results day after day, month after month and year after year. Right? So we're going to smash those dude, all that self doubt, all those limiting beliefs. We're going to completely destroy them, dude. Right? So that you can actually become the man that you know you should be period and gain clarity in your life. So many of us, we have no clue. If you were to ask someone, dude, what, what do you, what, what's your plan for this year? Just this year. Hey man, yeah. what's your plan? Most people, oh man, you know, I guess my plan is, you gotta watch. You know, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, man, you know, I'm just gonna work this job and maybe something good will happen or maybe Allah will bless me with something. That's not how it works, bro. That's not how it works, okay? Really it works it. when you actually have a plan, you have a strategy, and you freaking execute, dude. And you go after with everything that you got. When you yeah. actually have real clarity of like, this is my target. This is what I want to get to. This is the target that I want to hit. And it's what I want to hit. It's not what I'm settling for. Mm -hmm. It's what I actually want. All right. And again, heal from trauma that makes you feel broken and unworthy. Most of us, dude, you talk to men, they'll, that's what they feel like, dude. They had emotional trauma, sexual trauma, physical tra They had these things going on, multiple things go on in their life. And they feel like they're a victim now. Their whole entire life, they just felt like a victim. And they feel broken, emotionally broken inside and unworthy to change. I don't deserve this. I don't deserve to be happy. I don't deserve to have that type of wife. I don't deserve to have that. That's for other people, not for someone broken like me. And then lastly, it's just gain mastery of your life, right? Gain mastery of your life. Take full ownership of your life for the situation and the reality of your life, dude. And then gain mastery of it. Gain mastery over yourself, over your thoughts, over your actions. And then inshallah, it will gel by the permission of Allah over your results. Simple, man. It's not overly complicated. So lastly, Brother Josh, I want to ask you, why do you feel that this is prevalent? Why do you feel that this is a very important issue amongst Muslim men that we need to deal with? Why? All of these issues? Yes. Well, man, Allah says if you don't support his cause, if you don't support Islam, he'll replace you, dude. That should scare the living daylights out of you. I fear that every day, dude. I fear every day that Allah is plotting against me and he's about to replace me with someone else who cares about his deen, who cares about Islam, 
who cares about being a real example that follows the Sunnah of the Prophet and, and, and follows the, the, the Sahaba and the Tabi'in, the Atba Tabi'in, the, the righteous Salaf of the Zuma. And so, if you're not afraid of it, yeah, cool. You do you, man. But for me, I'm afraid of being replaced. I'm afraid of being replaced. I don't want to go back. I don't want to go back to what I was before. You know, I was thinking that just the other day, man. Like, it's, I, I don't even recognize myself from three years ago, dude. Who I am today, dude. And my lifestyle, my choices, dude, I don't even recognize myself. And I don't want to go back that to that, that version of me mm -hmm. ever. And, and even with everything that I'm doing, I still am afraid that Allah is going to replace me. So that's why it's important to me. And that's why I feel it should be important to you. All right. It's time and it's no one else's responsibility but your own. Stop looking for someone else to fix the problems in your life, man. Stop looking for something else. Stop looking for someone else. Stop thinking that I'll just make dua with no strong intent of doing anything about it. Get real with yourself, man. Fact. And we, you know, we've been told all these, you know, for all these years, man, to be, take it easy on yourself. And you know, no, no dude, like, get real with yourself, dude. Man up. Like, like, Sasa, dude, hate. Like, dude, lean into that. Open up that door and actually walk through it. All right, and deal with the issues that are in your life, man. Get real with yourself, and then do something about it. Cause some of these brothers, I, I, I swear to God, brother Josh, I swear to God, I've seen it with my own eyes. I, they notice that their belly is getting bigger and bigger by the day. They notice that watching pornography is ruining them day by day. They know this. Then why do you yet remain to stay in it? That living in beliefs, man. It's that you see I'm, un that, you I'm see, unworthy. You see it happening. Like, yeah, man. Then why don't you put an end to it right there and then? Why do you let it keep on happening? You know, it's like it makes no sense when they tell me this when I'm when I'm talking to some of these guys, right? No, it makes you know, me want to choke them. Like, dude, what's wrong with you? <laughs> dude, legit. You know, I, I, yeah. How would you say with those brothers who say, yo, I don't have the genes? I'm not a, you know, you know, I'll say, bro, it sounds like you ain't got the balls to fill those jeans. <laughs> I'm just going to keep it real, bro. All right. It sounds like that's exactly what it sounds like, bro. That sounds like some weak freaking excuse, dude. I ain't got the jeans. Look, dude, it ain't talent. It's choices. Period. It's not talent. It's, oh, he's gifted. Oh, he's this. Oh, he's that. Dude, you think a champion becomes a champion the, the night that you saw them win the belt? That's when they became champion. You must be kidding. Bro, it's the thousands and thousands and thousands of hours, dude, that they put in when no one was watching. When no one was clicking that pay-per-view buy button. When they were up in those early mornings putting in that work, dude. So, it ain't talent, dude. It's choices. Hard, hard work beats talent when talent fails to work. Exactly, dude. Exactly. Dude, you show me someone who's talented but's lazy, and you show me a dude who's average but will freaking grind and outwork anybody, and I guarantee you, might not right away. Maybe not right away. But yeah. you give it enough time, dude, and that freaking second person who has just, you know, average average ability but freaking is married to the game, dude, he will freaking kill that first person dude wipe the floor with them no question about it bro annihilation totally do total domination bro subhanallah and even if we go down brother josh we go down swinging Gun that's it. right bro that's what i'm saying bro like dude like you ever seen rocky you ever seen rocky when he gets it's for, like the 13 14 15 round whatever it is bro and he gets knocked down and then apollo creed thinks that Man, I won. I'm one. He's celebrating. He's celebrating, right? I beat him. I beat him. And then Rocky just gets right back up, dude. He's like, "Come on, man. Come on. Is that all you got, bro?" Yeah. The once I was, the, the, once the I was working out with this brother, right? And then uh, there's a guy in the gym that came up with a big physique, right? And we're working out, and I'm, you know, responding to the bench press and, and stuff. 
and uh, he starts looking at him, like mesmerized. Right? Oh, wow. I'm like, shut up and work. Like, you know, you're so caught up sometimes in uh, mm. what other people are, are. He works for it, whatever he, he has, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and, and you just be fixated in your goals because w- when you're sometimes looking over the edge, it, it may even end up in you not wor- want to work. Like, you look at what you got and where you have to go and the steps you need. And be fixated in that. It's nothing too complicated. Because, you know, I feel like a lot of people, we get caught up too much. And then uh, you want to befriend them. You want to make him your friend. Bro, there's no friends. You know, at the end of the day, you know, everybody's in it for themselves. You you got to be fixated. You know, like you can't, the guy that you're trying to even cross, you, you want to be, nowadays everybody wants to be buddy-buddy. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Okay, if he talks to you and everything, I, I'm not saying, be, like, obviously, take him as an enemy. But, like, it's something you're competing with. Like, if I'm competing with you, like, in basketball especially, I have this mindset. Mm-hmm. I'm not, I'm a competitor. Like, I, I'm not going to be your friend. When we're playing, Yeah. you know, I'm a different person. <laughs> and I'm the same, dude. I'm yeah. the same. We're, we're in a battlefield right now. This is not a friendship zone. You know? Now, I'm afterwards. I'm going to attack you or hurt you, now, but I'm yeah. business. Simply yeah, no, afterwards, man, I'll take you out and we'll get something to eat, man. We'll have a good time. We'll talk about how bad I whooped your butt. But And I'll give you some pointers on what you can work on. <laughs> yeah, not any friends here. And I feel like we lost that, you know? So we need to regain that. And then it's not a bad thing to have, you know how you said toxic masculinity. That's what they throw it in as. <laughs> dude, I mean, here's the thing is it goes, dude, there, no matter, again, we do not live in a utopia and ideal, idealistic world. There are winners and there are losers and there always will be. Always yeah. has been, always will be, no matter what legislation, laws, social narratives, whatever, bro. Yeah. Dude, yeah. there's always going to be winners and there's always going to be losers. All and you time. decide which side you want to be on, bro. That's it. Legit, that simple. If you want to feel like you want to be a loser because you feel like it's morally superior okay then bro go ahead and be a loser be my guest I- i'm trying to be a winner bro that's it and brother josh last thing is if people would say that we're being egomaniacal we're being egotistical we're full of ourselves you guys are clearly not humble you have big egos and you need to humble yourself because Allah hates even a pride of, uh, you know, uh, ego. And he's made uh, Jannah haram for that person, which is obviously a sahih hadith. Yeah, yeah. What would you res- respond with those, uh, like, if those people, they're, they're kind of going to obviously kind of come up with that? Well, man, I, I here's my thing, dude. You know what humility is to me? Admitting that I'm not the best and I'm willing to put in the work. That's humility to me, man. Arrogance mm-hmm. is saying, I don't need to fix nothing about myself. That sounds like arrogance, bro. If you feel you got everything figured out and you feel you're, you, there's nothing you can improve on, and you're, that's ignorance and that's arrogance, bro. Mm-hmm. Humility is saying, hey, man, teach me. Show me something. I yeah. want to get better. I want to improve. I don't like where I'm at. And you know what? We can look to the example of Yusuf alayhi salam. Did Yusuf alayhi salam not say that he was the best for the job? Was he, what, did he not say, after he got a prison, did he not say, hire me. I'm the man for the job. I'll do it better than all these other dudes. Give me the opportunity. So that tells me right there, if that's in the Quran, bro, you can, you can argue... All day and night about if this is Sahih, if this is Da'if, if this is whatever. Ain't no one going to argue that the Quran, bro, is Sahih. And that's straight from the, the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Yusuf alayhi salam said he was the best. He was the best. He wasn't bragging. He was speaking facts. I'm wow. the best. So, that's how I look at it, bro. That's how you look at it. And may Allah bless you, brother Josh for you know well. saying everything you said and for motivating the brothers anybody who took heed who got motivation from this please keep brother josh in your du'as and please it check is, out man. check out uma and it's not uma it's uma, uma. just for the record u m m a 
I like that. I mean, what you did there. I like what you did there. I legit Pretty like that. <laughs> and, uh, Easy to remember. Yeah, inshallah. and I got some last words. I'm like, you know, inshallah, guys, whatever we said, it was from the heart. It's like brotherly nasiha. And don't take us at, as enemies, at adversaries. You know, that's, that's the conflation people make. They take their yeah. brothers as enemies and their enemies as brothers, unfortunately, yeah. you know? So just remember this. We're not coming from a high, we're, 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 we're just on the same field, but it's just, you know, we're, we want the better for our people. We're not coming, out, from, yeah, exactly. Just to clear our intentions with this, right? And uh, Jazakallah khair, brother Josh. And I have it again. I'll say it's on the link on my description that if you guys want to look into it and sign up and Brother Josh for the brothers in Canada. How much is the plan? I don't know what it transfers in the Canadian dollars, uh, but it is a one-time payment of 297 US dollars and I'm gonna explain something real quick, dude. This is not your typical program that you just buy, right? This is much more. And if you look at the program, if you actually go to the website, I explain everything in detail, bro. It's not just a program that you just buy, you just watch passively, maybe do it, maybe don't. I will personally follow up with you either by phone or by email every single week. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna hold you accountable, dude, because your success is my success, man. It does me no good if you purchase the program and don't do anything with it. I'm on a mission, bro, period. I'm on a mission to by the permission of Allah, earn the honor and the victory from Allah for this Ummah once again. That's my mission, bro. And I probably won't even achieve it. And I know I won't, you know, after I, till the day I die, bro. I'm not going to, but it's but something that's so important. Swinging. I'm going to go out swinging, bro. That's so it. This is something, dude, that I will, I will hold you to, uh, to account every single week Allah, until I get you where you want to go, man. SubhanAllah. And also, so, guys, Brother Josh, he's on Instagram, if you guys don't know. My laptop is almost out of battery. Uh, <laughs> uh, Brother Josh is also on Instagram, so if you guys don't know, please check him out on the social media. And even there, Brother Josh is very accessible. You can shoot him a message, inshallah. Any questions you had, feel, feel free to ask direct. I'll link it down all below. And Brother Josh, Jazakallah khair for everything. Yeah, thank you so much. And thank you guys for watching this video. I know I was in my car, but make dua. Allah gives me a studio. I'm joking. <laughs> I mean, you gotta aim, you gotta aim. You gotta aim high, you know. Uh, and, and, and look at these kids. It's minus 30 and they're playing hockey. Wow. Dedication, bro. That, that, that's what I call real dedication. The kids, man, look at that. Oh, wow. That's crazy. But Brother Josh, Jazakallah khair. And the laptop yeah. battery is about to die, and we have to run out of here. So, guys, take care. Assalamu alaikum. Brother Josh, what's your extra? What's your extra on your YouTube channel? Like your extra? Uh, Josh Angel. No, like when, you, when you're closing out your videos, what do you, how do you close it? I'm out. Like, do you say something particular? Stop stressing yesterday. Stop fearing tomorrow. Make today great. Let's do it. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum.